Welcome to another episode of the Do Well Podcast. My name is Jalen Havier. And I'm Craig Bass. Yes, and we want to thank you all for coming back with us. Another yes. Episode. Man, y'all been rocking with us. Yeah. Uh, three episodes in so far, man. We just thank y'all for all the support, likes, comments. Um, and we want to just give you more information so you can continue to support us. Yeah, absolutely. Once again, thank you all so much. There are so many uh, voices out there that you can listen to. We really want to appreciate you. Our day ones, especially yes. our people from Mac Town, making hey, Georgia. Hey. We know y'all are supporting <laughs> us and we love you. We're thankful for you. Um, yes. So if, if you guys want to uh, dive a little deeper into our content, little, mm-hmm. learn a little bit more about who we are, you can follow us on social media. On Instagram, our uh, handle is Do Well Podcast. And Same. please follow us. And you can also uh, find us on YouTube at Do Well Podcast. Please subscribe there as well. And share, if you feel it in your heart, yeah, share it with others. Um, we think we're doing some, some good stuff here. Yes, 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 sir. And um, so we want to go ahead and give you, this is going to be a, a bit of a sensitive topic, you know. Yes. Go ahead and let you know from the jump. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if you were, were with us on our first episode, a couple of weeks ago, we covered the COVID-19 pandemic uh, just on a broad scale. But today we want to cover something that um, the COVID-19 pandemic has brought to not only the light, but has uh, made an even bigger issue than it was already in the world. Yes. Uh, and just speaking plainly, we're going to be talking today about uh, pornography. Yes. And especially how the COVID-19 pandemic has uh, made this situation bigger um, and has caused more people uh, to fall deeper into this area of addiction. So mm-hmm. I'll speak to you today, man, just speak sensitively to that topic. Um, and we're just going to be very honest and transparent today with you on this topic because we think it's yeah. that is affecting so many people around the world and it was already a thing that was affecting the world but now uh, it has reached almost uh, an even bigger fever pitch because of yes yeah yeah it it really has and Jalen, do you remember the government shutdown that happened was was it last year that the there was a government shutdown yeah yeah wow man well during that government shutdown i stumbled across an article Mm. and it was talking about porn viewership in Washington, wow. D.C. Wow. And wow. that's that's where I live. So I clicked on it. I was like, oh, wow, what, what's going on with this? Wow. When the gov- uh, government shutdown happened, when people were out of, mo- out of work for a month, there was um, a big uptick in porn viewership from D.C. I'm looking at the article right now. And so there was a 6.32% increase over the week of january 7th to 11 during the shutdown Jeez, Ooh. and and it spanned on uh spanned on throughout the weeks of of that government shutdown that was only wow. dc wow. and so there's government workers all over the united states but because dc is uh is such a densely uh government employee area yes there was an increase in in, in porn viewership here and so when I saw that, I was like, wow, I never made the connection between mm-hmm. a, um, like a, a widespread tragic event mm-hmm. and, and porn viewership. Right, right. And when I heard about, uh, when, I, when we first was learning about COVID-19, I was reminded about this uh, increase in porn, ship, porn viewership um, mm-hmm. with the government shutdown. And I thought to myself, I was like, man, I think it's going to happen again. Yes. And I came across an article and there was 11.6 increase in porn viewership across the globe since COVID-19. 11.6 global increase. And it probably has increased since I I got this data. So there's something there. Yeah. Right, Jalen? Yeah, absolutely, man. There's there's something there. And I think that, like you said, whether it was the government shutdown last year or just this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, we see that uh, these stressors, these uh, 
situations that are triggering are pushing people who already have different struggles and addictions, but especially pornography to, I want to say, feed the beast and go further in um, on something that is already causing such a, a issue. Exactly. Uh, we want to cover today uh, just some basic things on why is pornography so dangerous and um, just some of the effects that it can have on our lives uh, and just some of the effects it can have on our futures. Exactly. So, man, some of the things that we came down to just realizing about pornography, and these are coming from not only personal experiences, but research as well. Yeah, yeah. You going to talk about the, any of the statistics? Ooh, yeah, yeah. So right now, in the U.S. alone, this is just the U.S., so mm-hmm. keep that in mind. 40 million Americans regularly use porn. Again, 40 million. Um, so you think about 40 million people are consistently using pornography. Mm-hmm. When you look at some of the age ranges. It says that the largest consumer group of online pornography is men between the ages of 35 up to 49. But yeah. then the other side, one third of all internet pornography users are women. So we see, you know, that this is not a, it's not just a male issue. This is not just a female issue. Um, this is just an issue for all of humanity. And you gotta think on a scale, if there's 40 million people who are already consistently using pornography in the US alone, and Mm -hmm. see that that's consistent before a pandemic happens um we see that's how you get to a point where there's an 11.6 percent um rise in use worldwide so we see that this thing is global at this point exactly Um, yeah yeah and 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 it's pervasive it hits all people groups it it (laughs) it is it's Sort of similar to COVID-19. It doesn't matter where you live, what racial, socioeconomic background you're from, uh, what age, porn hits every part of our society. And what's really scary is that it it hits a lot of our children. Uh, So our our last bit of statistics here, because we don't (laughs) want to inundate you with too many stats, but um, 90% of teens and 96% of young adults are Mm -hmm. either encouraging, accepting, or neutral when they talk about porn with their friends. Wow. So we have a whole generation. That's huge. 90%? 96% of young adults and 90% of teens are, are, are basically saying, yeah. I'm indifferent when it comes to it pornography. Is it, is. it is what it is. Yeah, if you watch wow. it, that's cool. Good for you. Jeez. That's that's the attitude, and that's yeah. that's our next generation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's something that's pervading our society, and wow. and it's wreaking a lot of havoc. Uh, but yeah. there is there is hope. There is hope. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so we want to just give you a couple things about why uh, pornography can be so dangerous. Um, just a couple quick hits on that. First thing we uh, want to cover is just that pornography is a counterfeit for true intimacy. Yes. Um, counterfeit for true intimacy. Pornography provides you with a false reality on what. Uh, uh, love is supposed to look like on what healthy sex is supposed to look like. Exactly. Uh, And what it does is this, um, when you indulge in pornography, what it does is it starts to rewire uh, synapses that are in your brain. Mm -hmm. What it does is that the way that you think about a situation the more you're exposed to something that is counter to how you're supposed to think about it, it's going to continue to change how you think. Um, it's going to change change the way that your mind is wired. And so when you indulge pornography, whether it is out of a place of frustration, anger, sadness, depression, all these different things, you are training your mind to say, hey, I am dealing with this issue and, and my response is to indulge. Mm. And the trouble mm. with that is when you indulge something like pornography, you're indulging your mind, which is full of imagination, 
into a place that is not a reality. Wow. You're bringing that back into what your reality is and trying to match the two, but they don't match up. They don't. You know? They don't match up. Yeah, mm-hmm. that 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 was um, well articulated, Jalen. They don't match up. It is uh, a juxtaposition. It, it, it's a realities that that do not match up. Now you have to understand that the porn industry has millions and millions of dollars. I don't have the the statistics on how much money they have, but they are a extremely wealthy yeah. organization. Yeah, and they put marketing. They put they put their studies into what arouses people Mm -hmm. and what hooks people into their product so they can keep coming back. So the card is stacked against you already. You know, they, they are manipulating our basic human nature of desire, of intimacy, of belonging, of of passion, because that's the way that God has created us and they're manipulating it in order to take advantage of of what they know. They know what people Mm -hmm. desire. It's on purpose. Mm -hmm. It's on purpose. And and that's Mm -hmm. the reason why pornography is such a huge industry and it's such a problem, no matter what group of people, you're Christian, you're a Muslim, you're rich, you're poor, black, Mm -hmm. white, Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. It's it's an industry and it's a topic that that it it just seeps into everything. And, yeah. and it, like like Jalen said, it's a counterfeit for true intimacy yes. because God created us to be intimate with one mm-hmm. another. Right. And intimacy right. is not something that is only for a husband and wife. Right. Intimacy is with friends, is with right. family, is mm-hmm. with, with others. And what pornography does, it separates, it takes a sword and it just slices Hearts. that intimacy cord that we have with other people mm-hmm. and it causes people to, to isolate. Right. And and that's what we're seeing right now with COVID-19. A lot of people are isolated. Oh, yes. And they're going mm-hmm. to pornography for intimacy and connection. And it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big problem. Yeah, man, that's, that's so real. It isolates you, it really does. And um, one thing that we have seen, you know, is another thing that it covers and that it, it, it really, it really keys in on this is that you got to think it's a business. All businesses have, have advertisements. Yeah. We've heard the phrase before, sex sales, sex literally, sales. literally, literally literal sales. statement. That's a literal statement. Um, and so there's advertisers who are pouring money, you know, and even Craig, what you said, like millions and even billions of dollars mm-hmm. are being invested um, to prey on, you know, what our thoughts are, our insecurities, our feelings. Um, there's there's all types of pornography, and literally, there's all types because there's all type of people, and they're trying to engage every type of person. Um, but one thing that we've learned uh, about pornography as well is that it is not a healthy uh, outlet for pain relief. No, <laughs> it's it's, it's, yeah. not, it's it's just not um, because. Like Craig said, with the isolation part, um, pornography is a just in and of itself an industry that is the biggest worst kept secret. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone knows about pornography. There, there's literally no one you can find. Even sadly, you can find at this point. You know, there's children who understand the concept of what pornography is to the oldest person. But the thing about it is, no one really wants to divulge that hey i am regularly or i do indulge in this Mm -hmm. Uh, because we know that sex in in and of itself is supposed to be an intimate connection uh we believe as christians between a man and a woman within the context of a marriage and yeah is a level of not only intimacy there but privacy there so, I love that privacy. You know, yeah, privacy. Um, so, on the same way, in the same way as people who are all designed by God, whether you believe or not, we're all designed by God. We're all designed with the capacity uh, for sex, a sex, sex drive that is uh, built to be realized within a marriage. Um, but what happens is when you take that out, you're still having to deal with the desire for intimacy and the desire for privacy. So when you shift that over 
to pornography, you're still trying to get the intimacy and you're still trying to deal with the privacy. So on that side, when you do stuff that's not in the right arena, it can bring about shame. Mm, wow, that's powerful. Yeah, it can bring about shame. And shame is the number one culprit for, mm-hmm. for isolation. Mm-hmm. It's the number one culprit. Because when you're feeling shamed, you don't, you don't want to be exposed. Right. Will right. people accept me right. if they really knew what was going on on the inside? Right. That, that's, the, that's the conversation of, of shame. Mm-hmm. It's like, will I be found out? Right. I'm, I'm so messed up. Mm-hmm. Will I be found out? Right. And, and that's right. what keeps people locked up into these vicious, vicious cycles where right. they, they are feeling shameful because of any kind of unwanted sexual behavior mm-hmm. or any addiction. And then because of that shame, they hide it. Right. And when you hide it, there's, there's, no, there's no freedom that comes in hiding. Right. And so you, you go back mm. to that thing that is causing the shame. Goodness. And so it becomes this vicious, vicious cycle. And, um, and, and this is something that is, is very painful. It caused people a lot of hurt and brokenness in their lives. And mm. I just want to pause right here and say, if you're listening, hear us. This is a no shame zone. So if you are feeling any bit of shame right now, we want to invite you just to put that aside, throw it out the door, come back and like, and and join us because there's no shame in Christ Jesus. And there's no shame here on the Do Well podcast. Yes. So just wanted to go ahead and let you know there, nip that in the bud right now. Right Um, now. But just uh, coming back to, to the discussion points, it, shame and isolation and unwanted sexual behavior yeah. it breaks down intimacy and one area that we see it in a society is the breakdown of marriages yes yes yeah it, it's the breakdown of marriages and um yeah, yeah I, go ahead jay i'll just let man you uh, back. <laughs> man that's that's you, you just said something uh breakdown of marriages man uh the family structure mm-hmm. I, there have been so so many marriages that have been um, wrecked let's just be honest wrecked by wrecked uh, yeah pornography man and because here's the thing right um when you look at it on just the surface i think sometimes we look at pornography and we look at it as oh man okay this person is watching pornography in a marriage whether it's the husband watching it whether it's the wife watching it because mm-hmm. it's on both at this point um we can look at it sometimes to surface level and think that it's, oh, it's, it's just that they were watching pornography. But no, what happens is this. Pornography is not a isolated uh, action. Mm-hmm. It's just not. So it is going to affect everything around you. It affects everything that you are in involved in because ultimately it's affecting your mind, how you act. And so within a marriage, a person indulging in pornography, if their partner isn't um, aware of this, which most of the time they, they aren't, um, that causes for that person to, the person who's indulging, to deal with not only shame, but now they're compounding that with hiding. Mm, wow. With, right. And so you take on the shame of pornography and you just build on that rock. Now it's a shame pornography. Now you put lying on top of it because Mm -hmm. to cover it up. Um, And then you're trying to deal with being your yourself with integrity, but you can't, you can't. So it, 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 it goes so far beyond just the act of watching pornography, the shame, the hiding, the lying and all these things to cover up and those feelings that, when you indulge something that is giving you a false reality, it you try to take that into your marriage, and that reality that was on that 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 false reality that was on the screen, it can't translate. <laughs> it, it, it does not translate. Yeah, it, it that's that's so powerful. It can't translate because mm. it is it, is it, is one reality because pornography is, is it's a fantasy. It's a fantasy. Now the people in it 
who are acting out these roles and are involved in it. They're real people. That's reality. That's real pain and hurt. Even though the people who are making the pornography films, they're suffering. Right. A lot of them, uh, I I actually read that many of the uh, people who perform in pornography came from broken homes. They were Mm -hmm. abused. They were um, trafficked. Yes. Uh, They they were abandoned by family members. And so you have these broken people who often come from not wealthy backgrounds because these uh, form produ- film, film producers, they, um, they love, they, they really focus in on people who are vulnerable. And so they find these people who are broken, who have uh, not a lot of money in their bank account, and they go after those people. So, yeah, it, it, it it's a it's an issue. It yes. really is. It really yes. is an issue. Yes. And so, yes. we we really do have to understand that in order to have true intimacy with our family, with ourselves first of all, and also mm-hmm. in a in a marriage context, if you want to have intimacy with your spouse, yes. that you can't live in these two different worlds Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and there one is a fantasy and the other one is reality. And like you said, Jalen, it just, it doesn't translate. And so, um, and and my my last point here is that, um, on a practical point Mm -hmm. there, there's been a lot of research and studying and interviews done with people who are actively, or in the past, we're actively looking at pornography. And when it came to having intimate relations with their spouse, they couldn't get erections. And I know that's a bit vivid, but yeah, they, yeah. they couldn't perform the act of, of making love to your, their spouse because yeah, yeah. They, they were drained out, you know? Yeah. They, <laughs> it's, it's true. You know, they, they went over to this fantasy yeah. And they poured all of it into that and they don't have yeah. anything to give their spouse. Yes. Yes. And I think that's something that you, you know, it, 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 it sounds, you know, like on a practical level, it's like, dang, they, they, they don't have anything to give, but it's true. It's true. It's true. Because, and, and not just on a physical level, I know we're, you know, being a little graphic, but hey, that's, that's the truth. That's um, the truth. Yeah. On a physical level, you know, with people, not to be able to have erections or become aroused for their partner, but also emotionally, it takes away something that you could give your partner because in a marriage and just in a relationship, whether you date in, you know, any of those relationships or even in friendships, um, when you indulge something and you are supposed to be pouring your heart over to your partner and you say, hey, instead of me, um, dealing with the feelings that I have and building a greater relationship with the person that I'm with, I'm going to take those feelings and just uh, deal with them like by being somewhat self-indulgent with pornography. Mm -hmm. You take away the opportunity for that person to love you through it, for them to support you, for you all to grow stronger because you all have a, a, a deeper level of intimacy. So now you can only go but so far with that person, whether it's your partner, your wife, husband, you only can go but so far because when you deal with those feelings, you're not giving them the opportunity to, you know, live that life out with you. You're you're putting it somewhere else that it really doesn't belong. So. Yeah, yeah, and and it also blinds people to the truth. Yes, of yes. how God created. Mm-hmm this world and the way that he created our bodies, yes. the way he created us to practice passion mm-hmm. uh, because sex is not a bad thing. Let's go ahead and just make that clear. Right, right, <laughs> right. It's, it's not. It's not. It's a right. beautiful, <laughs> it's a beautiful act of love that is meant mm-hmm. to be in the covenant of marriage. Amen. Amen. And of course, that is, that is what, especially if you come from, um, a Christian background or you are a believer. Mm-hmm. I know some people may not have our same worldview, right, but right. from a Christian perspective on a spiritual sense, um, there is an enemy of God that wants to completely dismantle 
the authority of God and what yes. he's placed on his children. Yes. And yes. so this is one of the ways that, that the enemy does that is by, is by blocking us from the truth of the way that God made us. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when we get stuck in these cycles of, of shameful behavior of addiction to porn or, or any other kind of thing, that it blinds us to the truth that, wow, like God loves me. I have purpose. Um, I'm meant to practice intimacy and passion in this kind of way and in this context. Um, and I, I think it's a good place to talk about single yeah. life. Yeah. You know, we hit up marriage, Ooh. but yeah, what, what's, what's the message for a single people? Man, the message for single people, and this is... Uh, the thing about it being single, especially dealing with this issue here, um, that it, it, it leaves you somewhat ill-equipped to deal with relationships and to build them on a healthy basis. Um, you think about it like if you have a person who's trying to uh, build a relationship with someone, let's just take it out of pornography for a second, right? Let's yeah, yeah for a business, right? You have two people who are trying to go into business with one another and you have one person who comes into this relationship they're trying to build, but they come in bankrupt. Mm. When you come in bankrupt, even though you may legitimately have, you know, the best intentions for this other person so that you all can do this business, when you come in bankrupt, you're already starting at a deficit that can not only hinder you from being able to give all that you're supposed to give, but it also doesn't paint you in the right light because you're going to always be, even though you're working with this person, you get really care about this person, this business, because you have this deficit here, you're always going to have to move and think from the point of dang, but I'm still Mm. get out of this hole when I'm supposed to, <laughs> so it it is the same thing with 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 this pornography thing, man. Um, it it can it can start to bankrupt you. Yes, yes, it, it really can. And when you're single, like we understand that it, it's challenging. Oh yeah, because a lot of people, a lot of single people, um, don't have community, mm-hmm. or at least constant community. They may be living alone. Um, you know, the, of course, you know, people have their friend groups and everything, but if a community of transparency and openness, uh, hasn't been cultivated, a lot of people can just feel alone on this topic. And so, you know, they're, they're suffering by themselves and nobody knows about it. Right. Nobody right. knows about it. And so if right. you're single and you're listening to this, just know that we see you, we love yes. you. And and like there, there is hope in this, um, yes. but yeah, it really is. I really do feel. I mean, I, I, we were both single before. Yes, yes. You know, we understand. Like it is, yes. it's challenging. It's very, you know to to live, you know, a, live according to you know what we what we believe God is saying. Mm-hmm. But the truth is that you know to not have sex before marriage, to walk in purity, those yeah. things are not easy. When you yeah. cut on the TV. You know, five minutes into an episode, <laughs> it's just people on that getting it. You know what I'm saying? Every every show, <laughs> every show on the commercials. You yeah. know, it, it it's everywhere. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, I think this is a this is a great place to segue into yeah. uh, a, a really cool. I, I like this question uh, yeah. because we understand that everyone doesn't have our worldview, right. and so on yeah. a practical level, you know. People may be looking at this like porn isn't a bad thing. You know, why do you think porn is bad? You know, we've already talked about some of it, but, um, you know, on a practical level, why do we why do we think porn is a bad thing? Yeah. right. Well, man, on just a practical level, man, it like you said, take if you take take all the spirituality. Yeah. Just take all spirituality. Yeah. Yeah. Take take all of it out of there man like we said not only will it con- consistent indulgence will rewire your brain um to not be able to deal with issues um in a healthy way but also man it can increase um 
just your level of anxiety as well. Like, mm. I mean, and, and this is coming from a person who has struggled with this uh, before, man. And um, it's a daily fight. Um, and one thing that the thing that it increases with your anxiety is because like we were saying, it increases a level of shame. It, 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 and when you think about it, if you walk around every day feeling like, okay, today is going to be the day that someone finds me out. So mm-hmm. it's gonna mm-hmm. be the day that I mess up, that I do, you know, you it, it, it gives you, it puts you on an anxiety uh, level that is unhealthy, man, you know, and we think about anxiety as a whole, as a society, but you think, man, if you compound this with something that everyone, or not everyone, but so many people are dealing with, but the culture around it tells you to keep it in the dark. Mm-hmm. That is troubling. That is troubling. Yeah, and and for for me on on a practical level, mm-hmm. why why I think it's a bad thing is that it it steals creativity. Oh man, yeah. Because if your mind is always weighed down with shame and mm-hmm. guilt and fear, like will wow. someone find me out, like you don't have much bandwidth to think creatively. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. (laughs) You know? That's it. Like, your art is going to diminish. Your your, your business work is going to diminish. If you're in a school, you you know, I can imagine your grades are not going to be as sharp. Mm -hmm. It just, it it takes away your focus on things that you need in order to improve your lifestyle, you know, and to be effective. And so it it just, it weighs you down. It really does. It doesn't give you freedom, you know, to Mm -hmm. be nimble and to be creative. Um, Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I meant, so it made me think though, right? Because I know we we took it out of a place of, for for a second, for out of spirituality. So I want to go a little deeper, man. So with this, because so many people deal with this, right? Mm -hmm. Do we think that this is a thing where, it's really always lust because you know see it on tv you know you see the commercials you know we we um me and my wife we just started ozark we just started ozark okay i I, I watched a few episodes of that yeah like it was ozark what it was ozark it was ballers it was power every other (laughs) first episode bro they going ham like they They go (laughs) in the first few minutes it's like it never fails like always like that first first few minutes they fin they finna make sure like oh yeah we're gonna go out real quick but so i know we see that somewhere so i want to like ask to just think on this like do we think that it's always is it always lust necessarily or is it something you know what i'm saying more I I am a firm believer that it is not all about lust. I got you. No, it, it's yeah. not all about lust, man. There is yeah. so many other components of, yeah. of of sexual brokenness or unwanted sexual behavior, whatever mm-hmm. um, term you want to coin it. It, it is not just lust. Um, yeah. And for yeah. a long time, even in in, in my upbringing, mm-hmm. I was. I was taught that either um, explicitly or um, in passing, you know, that, oh, you know, if, if you struggle with this, you know, you, you just burn it with lust. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, uh-huh. you're, you're burning with lust, uh-huh. you know, and, yeah. and you know, there was a lot of confusion there because it's like, mm. dang, you know, like, is that just part of who I am? I'm just burning with lust all the time. Right. Right. You no, know, but right. as, as, but as I look deeper, into into the issue and like god was giving revelation it was like oh there's so many other things that contribute to it you know for example you talked about anxiety earlier today and is that when people are anxious we try to find something right we, we want right. to find something right. that will help soothe us and calm mm-hmm. us down some people divulge deeper into their work right some people um dive deep into into uh drugs and paraphernalia um mm-hmm. and and others pornography is a way that they try to relieve that anxiety and find a place of peace that that's just yeah. human nature right right and so 
And I and I agree with you, man. I, I really, I really do. And I ask that question that way because I think that it's it's good for us to put it out there that way because I think sometimes, like you said, it's pitched to us like that oh it's just lust like yeah it's just lust you know you just you just you just think she's attractive you think he just looks great you just want to get it Mm -hmm. but you know that's that's what we really think sometimes and that's the sales pitch it's just lust but it's not you know it's deeper it's deeper um and and so um just to be in all transparency you know and and you and i have talked about this uh Mm -hmm. before um with this journey but um one thing that we discovered like you said was it was it it was deeper than lust Mm -hmm. it was deeper um even in my own life one thing that i as i started to really combat this thing um was just realizing like hey man you know yeah you you you're looking at it as oh you're indulging in pornography um as the the problem and that is a problem but there's roots that go way deep way deep deeper this is just a outshoot of something that is way deeper in your heart and as i started researching you know in my own heart you know looking at my own thinking on my own past i'm starting to see things like dang okay well i deal with when i deal with frustration when i deal with feeling like i have no control over certain mm-hmm. situations yeah i feel like you said anxious um when i feel depressed you know all these things and they 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 produce in you this desire like you said to get past them and one thing about us as as human beings no one, no matter who you are, at, at to a degree, every human being wants to have a level of control. Yes. Everyone. Yes. Wants a level of control. And when we don't get that, <laughs> how we deal with it a lot of times tells us the state of our hearts and what we deal with or what we uh, pour ourselves into tells you what we believe um, what we really believe will heal us. Uh, but a lot of times we just are putting ourselves in places that can't heal us, that can't fix the situation and only make it worse. Only makes the problem worse. Exactly. And uh, another area that, um, that makes this, this sort of cocktail um, of, of pornography use is futility. A lot of people miss this, but when you don't feel like you have purpose, my goodness, and you feel like you are futile or disposable, that that is is one of the things that will make you go somewhere or to something to find purpose, Jeez, to find so. meaning, to find belonging, wow. and so that's an area that that I was completely blind to just like, Oh Mm. wow. I never realized that I may be feeling like I don't have purpose Mm. or I don't have belonging, which Mm. is, which is far from the truth. Right. 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 Uh, And like you said, man, that futility, you know, you you think about the, where they say, uh, you know, they talk about sometimes where people will commit like these heinous acts and sometimes they will examine a person, you know, and that person will kind of just have this nonchalant attitude about what they've done. And a lot of times it's that, it's that futility. They feel like, well, shit, if I don't got purpose, you know, what, what's the, I mean, it, like, it's that thing where you hear people say, you know, if you, if you don't value your own life, you could do anything. You, you can do anything. You can do anything. That capacity is there uh, when you don't feel valued. Um, and so, Man, I think, too, and on top of that, too, with the futility, man, uh, one thing I've noticed is uh, for people who get to that place where they feel like they might not have purpose, I think a lot of times they are dealing with unaddressed wounds. Yes. (laughs) They're dealing with stuff that is just like been there festering, you know, for a long time. And sometimes it pours itself over into these unhealthy actions. Yes. Absolutely. Unaddressed wounds that a lot of time, and it's not always the case. I've had conversations mm-hmm. with, with many people who, uh, who have struggled with pornography and they, you know, they tell me like, yeah, Craig, you know, when I was five years old, I found my dad's, my, <clears throat> excuse me, I found my dad's magazines in the bathroom cover or, um, you know, and 
when I was 16 or 17. These are like real conversations I've had. When I was 16 or 17 years old, you know, I was, um, you know, not in a, a, a healthy relationship. And so I went to pornography or even, man, you know what? I'm 35 years old and I've never messed with pornography in my life. But, you know, with, with work and raising kids and my wife, you know, my yeah. marriage not going too great. And yeah. We got bills to pay. You know, yeah. I started watching porn. Yeah. And, and so you see a pattern there. There's just wounds. There's things that pain us and hurt us mm -hmm. that when it goes unaddressed, you know, it, it leads to a lot of more pain. There's, there's a quote by a guy named Richard War. He says that mm -hmm. if you don't um, transform your pain, you will transmit it. Mm. If you do not transform Ooh. your pain, you will transmit it. That's good. Ooh. Yeah. Goodness. And, and so oh, for, goodness. I know one of the things that's important for us in this conversation is to share mm -hmm. my own personal experience. Yeah. I never realized that when I was shown pornography at the age of, gosh, I believe I was eight or nine, mm -hmm. I never realized that was sexual abuse. I just thought for the longest, it was, it was just normal. It was just what people do. I never realized that a part of, that was a part of my story that no matter who it was, it was an adult sharing it to another adult or a child sharing it to a child, which is happening a lot. You know, yeah. where we see, you know, 90% of kids think yeah. it's cool and they're showing each other it. Yeah. We don't realize that is sexual abuse. No, they weren't yes. touched. They weren't molested. Right. But they were shown something that they were never meant to see. Yes. And that is it, abuse. That's abuse, man. That's abuse. And, right. When you said that, that just, you know, because I have a very similar story. I was around eight or nine as well when uh, like an older cousin, you know, showed it to me, you know, and, and I, you know, and I can think back through where um, a little couple years older and um, they had this computer at my, um, my aunt's place where you could easily find pornography on there. And it's like, even as a teenager, small or, or right before teenage years, you know, I'm thinking like, dang, you know, I started indulging it. Mm -hmm. And I'm realizing, not even thinking, you know, because I at that time I hadn't thought through all of this stuff, but I'm realizing that dang at that point i could still process shame i could still process like fear you know and i'm feeling these things and i'm like hang why am i feel? you know what i mean and it, it like you said it's abuse yeah. but it also shows you man that no matter what age you are what your background has been um this thing can be very dangerous man and yes that you just you you don't want to indulge and for the people who have indulged or are indulging, you know, right now, you know, please understand that this is not coming from a place of judgment. This is coming from a place of love. We've struggled, we fought, we found victory, um, mm -hmm. Jesus, um, over these things, but it took time. It's a journey. Um, yeah. and there is no one, uh, perfect route. To There's no, yeah. There's many oh. paths to freedom in Christ. Yeah. In Christ. It's all in yeah. Christ, but there's in many, Christ. many paths that that Jesus will 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 lead us in. And no story yes. is the same. I I remember I remember um hearing a guy's testimony, several older men's testimony, mm. and they were like, Hey, I had this encounter with Jesus. And I'm not me, I'm not saying this in a slight way, so maybe I should change my tone, but they were saying, <laughs> Hey, I had this encounter with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that one encounter set me free and I've been free for 30 years. Right, right, right. And I'm just like, that's not my story. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, praise real. God, you know what I'm saying, yeah. from who yeah. all blessings flow. But hey. that's not the way my yeah. blessings flow. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Like that's my <laughs> journey was that it was a journey. It, it was, was a journey. It was a lot of stumbling and falling and going right. back to God again and again until right. I started to understand. I was like, oh, it's not only lust. Mm. Oh, I, there was unaddressed wounds in my life. 
oh, I'm feeling anxious and sad and scared right now. That's why when I started to realize these things, but when God revealed those things in my life, that is when shackles started to come off and I started to grow in freedom. And yeah. so remember, your story does not have to look like everyone else's story. If yes. God just miraculously hits you with his Holy Spirit bomb and you're set free from mm -hmm. life, praise God. Yeah. But if yes. you are struggling and trying to get free in this and it's been yes. a journey, just know, yes. keep moving, keep walking, keep fighting. Because yes. no story is better than anyone else's story. We're all on this journey. Yes. Amen. Amen. And, and and something what you said, man, it took me, uh, um, and to go a little bit for a second, it took me to the biblical character, Paul. Mm. Um, uh, for, whether you're a Bible reader or not, uh, we've heard the name Paul. You know, he was persecuting Christians before, and then he got uh, saved um, on his way to persecute some Christians. And it kind of brought me back to his journey where, there's two different accounts of his journey um, when he got saved. Uh, there in the book of Acts, when you ever get a chance, you can just Google Acts, Paul's conversion, look that up. But there's one account that we see just on the surface where Paul is, you know, riding. He's blinded on this road called the road of Damascus. And um, God, Jesus is speaking to him and he's blinded by his light. And it's like this quick miraculous uh, occurrence mm -hmm. but then and we and we hear that story right and he's and he's transformed but then on the other side like later in the book paul himself is telling um this council uh this big council about how he came to believe in jesus because if you know his background he hated he hated christians hated christians had them was there when they were getting killed was persecuting going off but when he tells his account of the story, he tells it in a way where he shows that even though there was this miraculous um, event that happened, that uh, Jesus kind of said this phrase to him, like it's hard to kick against the goals. Mm -hmm. And that phrase is referring to where there's these animals, these oxen, where they put these clamps around their feet. And when you put the clamps around their feet, it's designed for them to have to go forward and if they push back against it it will kind of pierce their feet so that they can't keep going back they have to go forward so we see that paul was showing there was this journey that even though he was in this state of anger and hatred against christians god was already doing this work in him and then there came this day where god was like all right i didn't kind of pushed you to this point now Let's do it. And I think yeah. that that shows that, man, regardless of you are recognizing it on your, your, your road to Damascus, your big event that happens where he talked to you in 30 years, you clean, or he's been pushing at your heart for a minute and it gets mm -hmm. to a point where things break through. Man, your journey is your journey. It's your journey. That's so powerful. That's so powerful, man. So as we approach the, the end of our conversation here, we, we definitely want to give you some encouragement. You know, mm -hmm. what, are, what are some practical and spiritual ways to find freedom? What are some steps yes. to take? Um, yes. and, and, and so, you know, I'll, I'll start off by saying, face whatever caused you to start. Oh, man, yes. Go, go back in your journey. Yes. You know, a, a, lot of, a lot of the conversation, especially in the church is get accountability stop lust you know just shut everything off block your internet all of those things work to a degree right right they they, they behavior modification that's what right, it is right it's right, behavior right, modification right but if you're right. looking for lasting freedom and change right. i would encourage you to go back to the beginning Yes. Where was your first encounter with pornography? Yes. And what were the circumstances that were surrounding that? What yes. was going on in your life? Where did that, mm -hmm. where did the, the hook sink deep and you just felt like you've been um, hooked since then? Right. Find out what that is right. and then and pray into that. And right. I believe that will offer a lot of revelation of why you are motivated or driven to pornography. Wow. That's that's so good, man. And that's something that we both had to get to a point of doing, man, because mm -hmm. like I said, it's easy to get into behavior modification. 
But until you deal with what that root is, it, it's going to be hard to overcome it, man. Yeah. Uh, just piggybacking off of what you said, man, where you said kind of uh, to pray into that thing and to look into it. Also, man, I think that it's always really, really important um, <clears throat> that we are, that you, you you become transparent about what you're struggling with. Yes. Um, you know, no, no, whether, whether this is about pornography, any type of struggle you have, Hey, listen, y'all, this ain't, this isn't tied just to pornography. It's anything you are struggling with, man. It, it, you have to get to a point where you will be willing to, you know, be open, confess about it. Yes. Uh, transparent about it. And with that said, I'm not saying you got to go on Facebook, tell everybody, Hey, man, you know what I'm saying? Please don't do that. Don't do that. Yes. And, and oh my gosh, please, unless the Holy Spirit leads you. Right. And I'm talking right. about you got that feeling in your gut. Right. You got the Holy Spirit is leading you. Please do right. not post on social media. Right. Please do not confess to a large group of people. Right, 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 right. Go to a trusted friend or yes. family member or a spiritual leader, someone you yes. trust. Yes. And share that. And share that absolutely, exactly, man. Share it in a in a in a, a confined space. <laughs> trust it, trust it. That it's you, you, it, it's it's wiser. It's wiser. It is. Um, but yeah, or be open, be transparent with them, uh, someone you trust about what you're struggling with. Uh, because I truly believe that um, anything we struggle with, when we, we struggle with that thing in the dark and isolated. Yeah, just feeding it more power. Yeah, we put the thing in the light. We say, "Hey, I don't care if my struggle was last night. If it was this morning, yeah, going to go, you know, and be transparent with someone that I can trust and let them know that, hey, I'm struggling in this area and I mm -hmm. better. And I believe like just that openness, that freedom to to confess it, man, um, with somebody that you know, hey. They're not going to necessarily judge me on this or just down me about it, but they can hold me accountable. Um, exactly. And support me in this, man. I, I think yeah. that we have to do if we want to see true victory. Yes, yes. And remember that when whenever you bring confess and, and, and shed light on the struggle you have, mm -hmm. um, if you listen to our, our last podcast about following and judging someone's fruit, how they treat people. Mm -hmm. If someone begins to judge you and they're overly hard on you, I just want to encourage you that confessing is not a bad thing. Right. Um, and I just don't want anyone to, to do that. And they're just like, I would never do that again when I did it. You know, someone treating me poorly. Right. You want to find someone who is benign, who's who is full of grace. Yes. You know, yes. who's going to tell you the truth, but yes. also going to put their arm around your shoulder. Yes. So yes. just uh, try to avoid any people that you just know have a, a record of being judgmental and, and, yes. and, and just not, not graceful. Yes. Amen. I completely agree. Completely agree. And, um, man, just moving toward past that, man, uh, one more thing we want to say to you uh, is you want to you want to pray, you know, for a heart change, you know, for a desire change. Just because yeah. changing, uh, changing the behavior itself isn't enough if your desire and your heart doesn't change. Um, mm -hmm. And also just saturating yourself with the truth, you know, yeah. saturating yourself with the truth, man. Um, getting that word. Getting, getting the word, man. Getting the word. And also like getting God's word, getting the Bible, seriously, getting the Bible. And then on top of that as well, man, get, read, read, read some facts, read some statistics, man. That's true. Like it's, 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 you know, read the word, read what God is saying about you, how he wants you to live life, how valuable you are um, in God's sight. And then also, man, read some of these statistics, man. You know, when we came on here, we saying, hey, 11.6, like, bro, we not... <laughs> We're not pulling this out of the air, man. This is this is real. It, I, yeah. I, there was um a stand up uh special that Chris Rock did about two years ago called Tambourine, if you if you get a chance to watch it on Netflix. But he had one little section in there where he was talking about pornography. 
Wow. And he was saying like, hey, you know, he, he starts talking about his faith first, just saying that, you know, he's trying to find God. But then he gets to this point, he talks about pornography very openly. And he talks about how it destroyed his marriage, how um, it caused him to be chronically late everywhere because he was in the wrong mindset. Um, and he just talked about how it just changed how he dealt with people, you know, and I think that when we see people, man, this thing is, it, it, it really affects folks. So look at some statistics, man. Look at how it, it affects marriages, all kind of, your single oh, yeah. people, man. Read, read up, man, because it's real, man. It's out there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so some resources that we have used ourselves where mm. either we are going to get some data, some information, um, accountability, or just to be educated, uh, yes. One of the websites is called Covenant Eyes, yes. and they yes. are well known. Um, they are well known institution that provides mm -hmm. data information. Um, they have a blog section where they either write blogs or they have guest bloggers um, and articles where you can just read up on it, and you can educate yourself um, about pornography, about how to get free. Um, and so a lot of things we talked about today, you'll, you'll find similar content on Covenant Eyes. Mm, absolutely. And then um, another one that we have here, um, this is uh, one more app that we want to share with you, but it's a little different. So uh, Covenant Eyes will give you a lot of different data and will give you statistics and also provide you with some uh, just healthy barriers, you know what I mean, so that you can kind of help yourself while you're trying to walk this journey. But also yeah. there's one called uh, Fortify. Um, that's Fortify, uh, quit porn for good if you look it up in the app store. Uh, but what this one will do for you is it will teach you and kind of walk you through this journey. So it's almost like as if you were rehabbing from the situation. So it will start you off with like a day one tracker and it gives you like different visuals to watch where it can kind of break down um, not just how uh, you know dangerous pornography can be but it also will break down like how much greater life can be when you are able to walk out you know that freedom man and yes so it's something like a daily tracker and just kind of walk you through some good stuff so. yeah absolutely absolutely and uh, there are other accountability tools uh, one is called X3 Watch yes. and Detoxify. And, and I'm sure if you do a search on the web, there are other um, mm -hmm. apps and different uh, websites that you can connect to your cell phone and your other devices. And it will keep track of what sites you're visiting and um, send any kind of you know, report, if they see anything that uh, looks like pornography, they'll send it to your accountability partners. Yes. And that way you have people who would check in on you and be like, hey, mm -hmm. I got an email. I saw that you visited this website. You know, can we talk about it? Right. So right it just, right. It, it brings you into that place of just like, I'm in the light. I'm still yeah. struggling. Yeah. But I'm yeah. in the light. Right. Right. Exactly, man. Yeah was one more thing um there was a book there was a book that she had um, yes it was it unashamed or was it un it was uh yes it's called unwanted unwanted yes and it's written by jay stringer it is yes. my yes. favorite material yes on this topic it yes. is phenomenal i want yes. to encourage you guys to read to read it and um this author his name his, his name is jay Str stringer he's um he is an ordained minister and he's also um, a, a physician. So he's a clinical um, psychologist. Yes. And so he did a, a large study on thousands of people who have unwanted sexual behavior. And he mm -hmm. just did a deep study on them and their experiences. And so a lot of the things that we talked about today stemmed from his book. So uh, please check it out. Buy it on your phone. Get it from Amazon or any other place you get your books. But I highly recommend Unwanted by yes. Jay Stringer. Yes, yes. So, man, we just thank you all once again for 
rocking with us on this. Yes. Man, we know it's a sensitive, it's a heavy topic, man. Mm-hmm. We think it is very important to make sure that people are encouraged um, in this area and to know that, man, hey, regardless if you are struggling, man, there is hope. There is hope for you um, yet this day. Um, and we want to just let you all know, you know, if you are watching this video and you, you know, legitimately just don't have anyone to reach out to, you know, if you want us to pray for you. Yes. Pray for you. And also we can connect you uh, with people who can assist you at a greater level because yeah. we, we won't play to be, you know, complete content experts or psychologists. We're, we're not ourselves, but we are people who are, um, willing to help you uh willing to help so yeah, yeah. absolutely and uh just we, we just we want to say a quick prayer because we like like Jalen said this is a heavy topic and we thank you so much for sticking with us on on this on today's podcast you know it's a little bit longer and it's a bit deeper but it's such such an important topic yes. uh, so we just want to say a quick little prayer um father god thank you for this time thank you for everyone who listened Lord, we pray that you will help um, each person who is struggling with this issue, whether it's pornography or any other kind of addiction um, during COVID-19, that you will help them with their struggle, that you will bring light, health, and freedom into their life, Lord. Lord, Lord, may they feel the love of you. Lord, may shame um, not be king. May you be king, Lord. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes. Thank you all. All right. And we will talk to you soon. Stay tuned and do well. Keep doing well, y'all.